Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial um, from Pixie Drops Digital Backdrops. My name is Christina and today we're going to be looking at compositing into this hot air balloon design. Um, one of our very best sellers and we have quite a few different um, options when it comes to this hot air balloon and so I thought it would be fun to do two different um, composites one with this cream tone and one in this blue tone and I'm just going to start here Oops, I'm gonna start here with the cream tone and as you can see I have shot this subject on very similar tones to this backdrop knowing full well I was going to create a tutorial and I wanted to make my editing life pretty easy and show you how you can do it yourself. Um, you don't have to have this balloon in your studio, obviously. I've just used uh, an apple basket. I think that's what it's called is an apple basket. And I don't have this exact layer. So I've just used a similar toned layer, um, you know, just a regular old tan fur layer. And then I've just hung up behind her, you know, a cream tone that I, I just grabbed after I got her placed. And so we've got some similar tones and that's going to make things really easy. And this is why I say in most of my tutorials that it's really important to choose your backdrop first. If you choose your backdrop first, then you can shoot your subject for your backdrop you know where you want them placed in the backdrop, you know which direction the light is coming from, what type of prop they're in, what pose will work best, and of course, uh, what tones are going to work the best. The first thing to look for in any backdrop, and that's not different in this one, is the direction of light. And there's some pretty heavy shadowing right here, and this side of the balloon is darker than this side of the balloon. So that lets me know that the direction of light is from the top and the left. And the shadowing on these bags right here is a pretty dead giveaway. So there's a highlight situation right here, and then there's shadowing right here. So when I went to shoot this subject, I lit knowing exactly that I would need top and left lighting and to cast shadows right in here for that very believable look when you do your composite. So that's enough talking for now. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out this subject. I'm going to hit the Z key and drag right to zoom in on her. Now, because I have used similar tones, I could just do a shortcut and quickly cut her out and drop her into the backdrop and blend it in and call it a day. But she has this absolutely fantastic hair and it's adorable and I want to preserve this hair as best I can. So I'm going to start with the quick selection tool which let me tell you doesn't work all that fantastic but I always use it for hair. It's one way to really maintain those fantastic flyaway hairs. And, oh, we've gone too far, so we'll just back it up. This will happen with this tool. Um, these flyaway hairs, if, if they're rounded out and look like a helmet, that's a pretty dead giveaway that you've done a composite. So it's nice to maintain that where you can. And I'm trying to select as much of the hair as I can without this selection, like taking off into the corners and selecting the entire thing. So I think that looks pretty good for now. And now I'm going to go to select and mask. And we're just going to refine this edge. I have the feather set at 1.3. I don't really touch much of anything else in here and I'm just going to run my tool along her hair. I'm going to do the rest of my selection by hand. Um, as I said, I just use this Refine Edge tool for hair. It's not a great tool anymore. It used to be, but uh, it's been fixed, air quotes, 
a few different times and every fix seems to make it worse. All right, so just coming along those edges and this will pick up those little stray hairs and really give you, again, just one more element to believability in your composite. All right, so always have the output to a layer mask. Click OK. And we don't have to know right now um, how much of this we want, and we don't have to make these perfect selections. I know that there are um, composite tutorials out there where you're making an absolutely perfect pixel by pixel selection around the edge of your subject. That is not what we're going to be doing here. I use a completely different technique. I am going to be selecting the white palette here um, and painting on this layer mask to add more of the detail from her into this image. But I don't even have to do it on this screen. I can actually do it when I drop her into the backdrop. I'm just going to add a little bit right now. And we can always take this away later. And this is one of the great things about choosing a layer mask. Um, you can add and remove as you see fit. When I first started doing composites, um, I had a different technique and it certainly wasn't the best way to go about things. I was just using um, the eraser tool and I used the magic eraser tool to erase backgrounds and then erase around. But the problem with doing it that way is if you make a mistake or you want to add something back, you can't. Uh, the data's gone. So that's why layer masks are the way to go. So I'm just adding a little bit in and around here. I'm not going to worry about it too, too much because I know that I can play with this when I get her into the backdrop. I'm adding this fur layer back in because I want to use this for blending. And this is where I messed up when I shot this. Um, I didn't have quite enough fur around her. I'll just open it back up to the original here. This is just a towel, I think it was, to to keep her in this bucket. And, you know, in a perfect world, I would have had more cream around here uh, so that it would match when we get her in there. But not the end of the world. Uh, certainly, that's a workable problem. So we're just going to take the lasso tool. Actually, we don't need the lasso tool. Just going to take the move tool and pick her up. And we're going to drop her into this backdrop. And as you can see, she's really big. And there's those wild hairs that we were trying to capture and preserve. And I'm so thrilled that looks great. So control T and we're going to grab the corner, hold the shift key to maintain the aspect ratio. So we don't have a wonky subject and we're going to size her down. And we want to place her so she looks like she is right on the edge of this basket. And we're going to click the check mark, hit Z, drag right to zoom right in here so we can see exactly what we're doing. And let's just take a look at the placement here. There's the edge. The edge is right where the fur is, so I'm just going to actually turn this down turn down the opacity so I can get her placed right on the edge. I might control T again and grab this corner and just turn her a little bit. Happy with that. All right. So we're going to be working on this layer mask right here to remove the um, parts of the subject image that we don't need. So we're going to click on the layer mask and I'm going to hit X to flip over to black. And we're going to be using the paintbrush tool here. I'm going to turn down my brush quite a ways down to 59, 60. I'm not super picky about that. And 
start brushing off this layer. And I'm, I'm blending it in with the layer below. And the reason why I wanted to maintain the original layer is then we maintain the original shadows. We don't have to build shadows, the shadows are already there. It just makes compositing life so much easier. And time is a precious resource these days. And the less time we spend in the editing bay, the more time we can spend doing other things. So I'm going to hit the left bracket key to t turn my brush down a bit here. And just slowly massage my way in right up to the subject and maintaining not only the background layer of the fur but the foreground layer as well so we have those believable shadows. Can turn the brush down again. It is a bit tedious, I realize. Let's creep up in there. If you hear the scratching in the background, I, I do mention this in other videos, it's my pen and tablet. I use the Wacom pen and tablet for editing and I just find it's much easier on my wrist. I can get in with finer detail when I'm doing compositing. Uh, it does take some getting used to, I've also mentioned that before, but uh, I really like it. It saves my wrist. I do have carpal tunnel um, and so it really helps with the pain of sitting at the computer and doing these fine details. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to turn the brush down a little bit further and just come in a little bit more here to make sure that we're revealing enough of that bottom layer to get a good blend here. Excellent. Just going to kick this up a little bit. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Z key, drag right. Back to the brush. Just slowly massaging in. Turn that brush down again so you can get the fine detail around the elbow. And here's where I made the mistake with the darker layer. But that's okay. I'm going to reveal the cream background layer in no time. I'm going to turn this up again because we really don't want to maintain any of the darkness from this layer because it was done in error. I come all the way up to 100%. Again, getting into these fine details with the pen and tablet is just so much easier. It can be done with a mouse. Power to you if you do it with a mouse. I simply can't do it. I'm going to flip back over to the white. You can do that hitting the X key too. Um, and then back over. I realize this is just a little bit tedious, but that's, it's the small details when you're doing a composite that are really going to set you apart from people who don't take the time for the small details. Again, the, like the hair detail, if, if I went in and painted off this hair and it was a helmet, you would know right away that this was a composite. It would give it away so quickly. Just 
working my way around slowly removing what we don't want revealing that background and it looks like I've had too much coffee this morning I'm gonna flip the X or hit the X key come back and add back what I accidentally took away okay All right, let's turn up our brush and just remove the rest of this. So that's uh, the right bracket key to increase your brush size, left bracket key to decrease your brush size so you don't have to come up into here every time, which believe me, I did for many, many years. But learning a few hotkeys is really going to um, speed up your editing process as well. And I can see there's a bit of um, the side of her that I'm not really thrilled with right here. So I'm going to turn down my brush size. And I'm just going to edge in here just a little bit and remove that. And then because when I'm shooting a backdrop, I, I don't have a subject in the basket. And so even though the lighting does match here, there's no subject in the basket to get in the way of the lighting. So there's no drop shadow here. So we're going to add a drop shadow so it matches a little bit better. But we're going to do that in a minute. I'm just going to reveal a little bit more of the backdrop fur. And hit X. Um, so I see a little bit of her elbow needs to come back. And then I added too much, and that's fine. All right. I'm happy with that. We're going to hit Z, pull left to zoom back. So what I'm noticing here is I do have part of her back in this image and it's lo looking a little strange. It doesn't really read um, because of the the way this backdrop is. So I'm actually going to remove it. Back to the layer mask. I'm going to try to follow the edge of her arm here. And just leave the arm in and not her back. That's much better. So we do have a disparity here because we have the shadow here and no shadow in here. And we're going to fix that in short order. But first things first, I'm going to just back out. I like to do this. I, you know, I come in close to do the um, fine details and then I back out to see how things are looking. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'm really happy with the hair, um, everything else, the blend on the fur looks really nice. The one thing I'm noticing is she's a little bit bright. So what I'm going to do here, click on her layer and then I'm going to go to filter and camera raw filter. And I'm just going to bring her down a little bit. And let's take a look there. So we'll go back into our history palette before, after. I think that is a much, much better. You know, sometimes you don't even realize like how bright your subject really is in, in your backdrop until you turn it down a bit and you're like, whoa, that was way too bright. So I do like that. That looks quite good. I think I might add a curve layer. So we're going to go here and we're going to add a curves layer. We're just going to pick up the highlights a tiny, tiny bit. And as you can see, I didn't have it clipped, so it brought the entire scene up. So let's clip to baby layer. 
and now it's only changed just her. And that might be a little bright yet, so again, this is why uh, using adjustment layers is such a great idea. Adjustment layers and uh, layer masks and whatnot. I can just manipulate her as I see fit. A small, small changes, but it's just going to give a tiny bit of contrast that we needed. All right, it's time to address the elephant in the room, this shadow area here, which you can't see too terribly badly uh, when you're pulled out. But if this were printed uh, large on a wall somewhere, you might notice. So I'm going to come in, zoom. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to manipulate the backdrop layer. And I have this question quite often in uh, from my customers, and they wonder, can I manipulate the, the backdrop layer? Of course you can. You've bought the backdrop. Please do anything you like with it. This backdrop is just begging for more clouds or a rainbow or some birds or whatever you like. I, I created it in this basic fashion so you could allow your imagination to run wild. I'm not going to spend two and three hours um, going through that on a tutorial with you, but if you want to add other elements, please feel free to do so. There are plenty of free cloud brushes on the internet. You can add a new layer, add more clouds. Um, as I said, maybe there, there's going to be an airplane back here or, or some seagulls or whatever you want. It's completely up to you. Please feel free to manipulate that background in any way that you see fit. Okay, back to the background here. So I'm going to copy the background and zoom in here. Now I'm going to add a layer mask and I'm going to go to multi well wait let's control I so that it doesn't show everything. I'm going to go to multiply and this is where we're going to add this shadow. It's going to multiply as in darken the pixels that already exist here. So let's see. See I forgot to use my hotkey again. Old habits die hard. All right, let's turn that up again. And we don't want this at 100%, not at all, or we're going to have one big black streak. We can turn this right down. And we're going to go ahead and add a shadow. Turn this down. I want quite a bit of shadow on this fur to blend with her. All right. It may not seem like we did anything there, but we certainly did. Here, let's turn this off. We made quite a significant change there, and that's just going to give you that much more believability. And hit C and drag left, and I would say this composite is finished. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope you are. Um, I am going to do another to another composite in this tutorial, but if you've seen enough, feel free to click off now. And uh, I thank you for watching. And if you're sticking around, we're just going to move right into this next composite. And the reason why I wanted to do this is this was actually a client request and we didn't get very many images with this baby. She was pretty fussy and she definitely didn't want to be posed. And it was nothing short of a miracle that I got this photo at all. So um, mom had chosen this though, and I didn't have a chance to shoot it on blue, but no problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this cream tone to blue. and I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I didn't have her on a blue layer either, but that's also not a problem. We're going to change this uh, blue, or sorry, cream layer to blue. All right, so first things first, I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to select from the backdrop but the color behind where her head would be. And I'm going to use that to fill in here. Boom. And I know what you're thinking. We don't want the entire image blue. So I'm going to hit Alt and 
the layer mask and that's going to bring up a black layer mask to hide. So I'm going to go in the layers palette. I'm going to hit color and then I'm going to be working on the layer mask and I'm on the white palette to reveal. And we're going to turn this bad boy right up. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color here. Move this out of the way so I can see the side. And the reason why I'm doing this is I want to show you just how easy it is to change a color and instead of using the refine tool or sorry the quick selection tool and refine edge we're going to cheat the system a little bit and have the background the same color or sorry the color behind her the same color as the backdrop and then we can just blend and we don't have to select so carefully. I like to use these um, big fluffy brushes. To, it gets just a softer blend in and then I can come back and paint out what I don't like with a smaller brush. Just a technique that I've developed over the years. It's my little quirk and uh, I'm okay with it. So X to flip around black and we're going to come down nice and small and in those areas where we didn't want blue, we're just going to paint it off. And using this technique, changing the color on the subject image is going to give you similar color casting as you would have if you shot it on blue. And again, this is just going to give you a more believable composite in the end. All right. I think I'll remove the blue off of this fur, though I don't think it's totally necessary. I'll just leave a little bit of the edge there. And a little bit here. Okay. I'm going to flatten this image. And now I'm going to take a big selection with the quick s or with the selection tool here. So I don't need to be, I want most of this fur because I don't know how much of it I'm going to use. And then I'm going to come in a little bit closer on her. All right, control C, control V. All right, control T, we're going to grab the corner, hold the shift key. So as you can see, we've got a pretty good match on that background. That's going to make life pretty easy. All right, again, I'm going to come in, turn this down so I can see where she is. I'm going to zoom right in. And make sure she's on the edge. And somewhat centered. Okay, let's turn that right back up. Excellent, and now let's go ahead and blend this out and then we'll work on the fur. So let's add a layer mask. And back to the black to hide. And I'm going to turn this down to about 
Sure, 66% because we're blending very similar colors and so it's fine and welcomed to have some of the back and some of the front together, blended together. And then we can cheat it and and keep that hair in there without having to use the refine edge tool. Because let me tell you, it's not my favorite tool. Not by any stretch. Well, let's just bring brush size up a little bit here. Let's get a nice soft feathering. Okay, let's have a look. Zoom, drag left. That looks pretty darn good. I think she's a little big here, so I'm just gonna size her down a bit um, before we continue. A little big and a little bright, I think. But we can solve that issue as well. So again, I, I did shoot um, this subject top and left. Um, here's the shadowing here that we saw in the original background in the, with the cream tones. Um, let's come in here and get rid of this here. And then we're going to figure out a situation with this um, fur. All right, come right up to 100%. Turn that brush down. I'm gonna zoom in nice and tight. I actually want to maintain that fur there because I'm going to change the color of this fur and then it will blend in with the fur that's peeking out from behind her. So you've got a little too carried away over here, so we add back in her shoulder. Okay, X to flip it over to black and I'm going to remove this here. Just massage down into her shoulder. And so, as you can see here, we've got a similar issue on this backdrop as we had on the last one, and might even be a little more pronounced here, because when I shoot the background, I don't have a subject in the basket, and so there's no shadowing here, and we're going to go ahead and add that shadowing in a little bit. So, zooming back out. Let's get rid of this. Right up to the edge of where the fur is in the background. And I'm just gonna softly like edge in here. And I'm actually gonna turn brush down and make it so there's just little pieces here and there um, from the original layer. Or the subject layer, sorry. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this fur layer to blue. So in order to do this, I'm going to click on the background layer so I can select the color of this layer. Then I'm going to add a new layer, fill it with that color. Add a layer mask, and you can change it if you if you add your layer mask and it's and it's just white. You click on it, hit Control, and hit I, 
or when you're creating the layer mask you just hold down the alt key and that'll give you the black layer mask you can achieve the same thing in photoshop in so many different ways and it, it's nice to know a few different ways okay so we are going to paint on the color onto this tan layer x to flip it around and oh i screwed up this needs to be on color not luminosity color And just like that, we have a beautiful matching tone. So I'm painting up into all of the areas where there is fur layer from her original image. And that gives those lovely believable shadows and it makes it look like she is actually sitting down into this backdrop. All right, I'm happy with that. I think the only thing that I might do, you know, I might brighten that up a tiny bit. And again, this is the beauty of using these layers in Photoshop is you can change it if you're not happy. Let's just see. No, I don't like that. It looked better before. Okay, what we'll do, we're just going to blend that on the edges. And we'll be off to the races. So we'll go back to her layer. Click X. And then just not at full strength. And come in and blend into the background. I see a little bit of blue has poked through here, which I'm not happy with, so I'm going to paint that off. Not a problem. Beauteous. All right, let's zoom out. Oh, yes. I'm happy with that. So I think I'm going to darken this part of the backdrop layer and this part of the backdrop layer, and then we are going to call it a day. So we're going to copy this layer mask, multiply. We don't want the whole thing multiplied. So back to the layer mask, control I, and then we're going to reveal it using white at a low opacity. So it's not going to be too much on this side. It's just going to be a little tiny bit to blend in with the fur. And I think that's quite enough. And then over here, just to see that she has shadowing. <coughs> Pardon me. And I think we need a little bit of a blend here, and I might actually do a bit of blurring here <coughs> to get a better blend or to get a little bit more believable um, depth of field here. Let's go back to her layer, and we're just going to ever so slightly blend that right there. So we do have a low opacity, and that's good. Just brings brush down a little bit. We're going to hide her layer just a little bit at a time. And 
And I think I came into her arm a little bit there, so I'm going to flip back over to the white and add it back. Actually, now that those are blended, I think that we're in good form here. Um, let's just zoom back out. I'm liking this a lot. I think she is still a little bit bright, so let's go to camera raw and bring her down a little bit. See how that looks. I like that, and she's a little bit saturated, so we might go ahead and add an adjustment layer saturation and bring it down ever so slightly. Let's take a look. Yeah, she looks a little less fluorescent there. All right, so again, if you wanted to come in and add more clouds or a rainbow or whatever you think will make this a more fun to or more fun composite for you. I know in the past when I've delivered uh, these images to clients, I've definitely added clouds in here and some right in behind baby's head, um, just to give that uh, more depth and more interest. Um, but I'm not going to torture you with. Um, an hour of adding clouds and whatnot. So feel free to play around and have a great time and enjoy yourself. And I thank you for joining me on this tutorial. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask.